Big shout out to fellow Game Nation teammate Ryan Yu that just finished first place at the biggest online Yu-Gi-Oh tournament of all time, the LCS. Not with Rock, not with El Lich, not with the best deck pendulum. With Sky Striker? Bro, what? Finished first with Sky Striker. And we are gonna be doing a deck pop all right now. So big shout out to Ryan Yu. So if you're ready for the video, smash the subscribe button. And most importantly, most importantly, get a beautiful trip gaming playmat in the description below. No engage. No problem. Let's get straight into the deck profile. The winning deck of the LCS. And no, it wasn't Rock. It wasn't El Lich. It wasn't Pendulums. It was Sky Striker with zero engaged. Ryan Yu, joining us today in this video is Ryan Yu. Ryan, say what's up to everyone. Why don't you tell them exactly the amazing feat that you just did? Hi, uh, my name is Ryan. I am on Team Game Nation with Steven. And this weekend, I played the LCS in one with Sky Striker. Yeah. One is an understatement. Every time this, he was playing, every streamer would go straight to his game and see him play. And honestly, bro, it was absolutely amazing thing what you did. But uh, what we're going to do, we want to show the entire world the exact list you played. So without further ado, let's get straight into your list. And I want you to explain to everyone your card choices. Uh, to start the deck, I played three copies of A, two copies of Rose. Uh, for anyone who does know what Rose does, it just, it can special summon itself from hand when you summon a Sky Shaker Ace. Then it revives itself from the grave when you destroy one of your opponent's uh, monsters in the extra monster zone. And do you, you have to play two, two Rose? Uh, I... There's no set ratio, but I really like two rows because testing, like I tested for a couple months with this deck because I'm in quarantine. I like didn't really want to play serious decks. Yeah. yeah. Because the really playing Yu Gi Oh is about being with people in person. Yeah. But I figured that I'd have a lot more fun playing a deck that I thought was more fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. fair, so, fair, yeah. Just in that testing, I found that the most consistent ratio was three day two rows because rows doesn't actually protect your like monsters. Right, right. Like, uh, Rose loses to the Avalanche Conquistador, which is really bad. Yeah, yeah. How, how is your matchup, by the way, uh, against uh, the Avalanche deck? Uh, the Avalanche matchup is actually my favorite matchup. I didn't drop a match to it. <laughs> okay. Yo, maybe this is, like, the low-key, like, the pick for the event, or, like, moving forward, because everyone's literally playing that deck at Rock, so... And judging from seeing you play against those two meta decks, you just slapped them all with this. I played 14 hand traps, 3 Ash... Uh, two Ghost Girl, uh, three Nibiru, three Vele, three Impermanence. So these were just the 14 best hand traps that I thought were the best uh, against Adamatia and Rocks. So Adamatia and Elblitch, uh, they're all pretty standard. Uh, you just play two of the Ghost Girl because she's the worst one. Yeah. She, she has the less, least impact and versatility. Yeah. I, I, still, I still thought she was better than like, Ogre or Phantasmic. I, I agree for sure. I agree for sure. And the best thing about uh, it is it's like a tuner too, which is good. Uh, the theory behind 14 is just that I want to see like 1 to 2 in every opening hand. Yeah, yeah. The striker really thrives in simplified game states. Yeah. So you just want to stop your opponent from playing when you can. Yeah. So uh, I played 2 area 0. Uh, one, is, one doesn't make sense. 3 is really tricky because it's not, it's not perfect. But when you get to the late game, area 0 becomes really good. Because without engage, the number of sky striker cards in your deck is higher because you have Grey and Rose with multiple afterburner, triple shark cannon, all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. So the whole area was pretty perfect. And then uh, just going on with those striker spells, one drone, uh, one multi roll, two uh, anchor. Just because those are the ones that they're the best ones in the deck, but you can't play more. Yeah. Uh, shark cannon. I really like shark cannon because it's it's good to hit. Area zero, it's good to have in your hand because it can interrupt the combo uh, against Elvish. Uh It's good for summoning monsters in my climbing. It's just a solid card. Mm -hmm. And then two Afterburner, because Blinding Second, this is the one second night by the way, Shocker. <laughs> blinding Second Afterburner is really good yeah. at breaking fields. That's right. And drawing it's just a plus one. It's three of spells, we play three Desires, three Cosmic. Uh, three desires because I just wanted to win. Rankers <laughs> is insane. If you see Ray and desires, you're lit. If you see just desires and drawn Ray, you're lit. So you're really good. 
Why why cosmic though? By the way, why why cosmic over let's say like three gold soldiers or something like that or phantasmia or crow. I played uh, three cosmics just because it was the best card going second in the other deck for hitting the continuous trap cards. Mm, and yeah, since right. you're playing so many hand traps in your deck, you want to make it so at least some parts of your deck are live when you play against control. Right, right. That's true. That's true. And then there's uh, one copy of Rota, uh, terraforming upset and mystic mine. Uh, only one Mystic Mind, because I wanted to be able to have two search targets to tear one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, so, the main deck looks good. What about uh, what about the side deck choices? Yeah, uh, in the side deck, I played Three Crow. I like to crow a lot, because it does something that a lot of other cards can't do when you play against stuff like Orcus mm -hmm. or uh, Outlitch. Yeah. Uh, it's very high impact against decks that it's good against, which is why I think it's the ideal side card. Has an extra hand trap. And then I played uh, two Mystic Minds and a set rotation, along with Metaverse. So I just added these in, uh, and I took out like Cosmic Cyclones or Shark Cannons against Adamisha. Because mm -hmm. going second, you just want more Blow Rats in your deck. Right. Uh, I cited two Jamming Waves. I didn't like it in the main deck because it's very, very bad against Adamisha and it's bad against Outlitch. Mm -hmm. Because against Outlitch, if you jam a wave or count a continuous trap, they just use it in the same end phase and it puts you behind a card. Right. So that was there for Guru or Altergeist or Salamangri and something like that. Right. And then uh, in the side, in the last six cards, there's just three judgment, three to go because they're the most broken going first cards of this deck. Fair. And right. Everyone makes you go first. Fair. So just moving on to the extra deck. Yeah. There's three, three Kagai, three Shizuku, three Hare, and then Zeke. This is kind of the perfect ratio. You could probably cut one Hayari. You want to win condition in this deck is lowering their life points and resources very slowly, and then having one crazy turn where you go like plus five, maybe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so three Hayari is good for applying pressure every turn. Yeah. And the last four cards are the access code package. It really helps this deck because you can banish every attribute from your deck, and it gives Striker the ability to kill. Yeah. Uh, which didn't you it didn't have previously. Right. So there's Beetle Fiber and Celine, but this you can summon Baylor with Jam Fiber and go straight to access. Celine baby, let's go. Then I played the one heat up because uh, you can make your eye very easily. Yeah. And Jet Synchron and Ash Blossom are very popular cards. <laughs> yeah. So I wanted to be able to convert a Kirai with no tuners into a tuner by abusing my opponent's graveyard to kill them. Yeah, that's so huge. That's how I won the finals, actually, because my opponent uh, set up a Hakero, and like, he had a huge board of like Lurd, Splatter, Hakero, a uh, continuous spell, and I had just a Shizuku and a Widowmaker. He actually died because I just stole the Outlitch, made Kagari, and then heated him for game. Yeah, I remember seeing that. I remember uh, just before the uh, the Hayate was summoned, or sorry, not Hayate, the Hita, before the Hita was summoned, I was looking in the opponent's graveyard, and I'm like, oh, I just, I saw Ash, and the second I saw Ash, you linked into Hita, and I was like, let's go! That's uh, got hype for you. Oh, that was crazy. Instead of Conquista there, and I was like, oh my god, that's just game. Nice. Right, that's amazing. That's amazing. So overall, what would, you, what would you say about your deck overall? Overall, do you honestly think that this is just the best deck moving forward? Uh, with the current meta? I, I am under no delusion that this is the best deck. <laughs> uh, I played it for two reasons. Number one, because I think it's the best deck moving if you're not playing it in person, so I wanted to work on a deck that I thought was a lot more fun to play. Because yeah, deck right. you have to grind every single game. It's yeah. not like a combo deck. Yeah. yeah. You have to play fair and everything. Yeah. yeah. And one of my friends said I can talk discussion. So, yeah. Well, fuck. Well, you proved his ass wrong. That's for sure. So uh, let's do this. So uh, I think we all come to the conclusion this is just definitely the best way to play Sky Striker. And we've been saying that you've been destroying people. Uh, with this deck going second against the best decks in the world right now, big boards. So why don't we show everyone, both on stream and on video, watching YouTube right now, just how you broke this board? Because I, I'm telling, when I saw this, I was amazed for myself. Like, your, your head's honestly not even that good, to be honest. Like if I'm being honest. I do a deck cosmic cyclone, no hand traps. Like this hand, everyone look at this hand. Everyone look at this hand. This hand is gonna break a full rock board. Against a very good player. Like, it was actually wild. I couldn't believe it. So everyone, we're going to obviously fast forward. 
Because who cares about the Rock turn? The Rock guy's going to do his thing. We don't really care too much about that. Let him do his thing. Someone say, oh, blah, blah, blah. Block Dragon. Okay, great. Fantastic. Ryan's just sitting there. No, they're just laughing. This is not even a good hand. Like, this is not... You don't even have Ray. This is just Rose, Afterburner, Widow, Desires. Like, this is just not the best. So, y'all don't see now how he breaks it. Like, I can't even believe it. Like, this has got me out of my seat. So, Reborn. Okay, let him do his thing. Okay, so... Okay, okay. So, we have Boral Savage, IP Mascarena, Herald, and Coco Mero. With full setup for next turn, with the block dragon, all of that. Full setup, everything. This against Sky Seeker should be more than enough, right? So, Chad Ryan over here just saw activate desires, not caring if it's gonna get negated. That's getting negated for sure. Uh, so, what's the point I'm gonna do? Negates with Herald. Uh, there's a reason why I'm not playing uh, Strikers in the top, uh, finishing first place LCS. I probably would have just normal summoned the Rose and attack Herald. Uh, what do you think about doing that? Is, that, is the reason you didn't do that because you wanna resolve Hayate? Um, I needed my Sky Striker like to stay on the field because my win condition was getting to Shark Cannon to banish his Block Dragon and Grave, so I could outgrind him. Oh, okay, okay. So I I needed the Rose to go through without getting IP, which is why I desired first Force Negation. Okay, fair, fair. So then after that, you're gonna have uh, okay. So the field spell. Does a field spell resolve here? So he's gonna set. Oh, okay, okay. So he's gonna is he gonna IP? Oh, yes, okay. Then yeah. I chained uh, Widow Anchor. Nice, okay. <laughs> Got his ass. Then he's gonna uh, savage. Do he savage? Nope. He waits. Resolves. Oh, get shark. <laughs> That's big. Okay, so now the last thing left. Yo, you are like eating this board like it's nothing. What the hell? Uh, so I ate a hit multi here, which is actually fantastic. Uh, so wait, what was the reasoning of multi roll instead of the, uh, the card that specials from Grave? Uh, Alphiral is like, yeah. like Alphiral just, the, in the, oh, wait, it, it lets me, it lets me do the Shizuku play in a base where I can add the shark in and then like reset it. Oh, okay, 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 okay. That's what, you're right, you're right, okay. So send that. It just sets, sets me up perfectly for the grind game here. Right, right, right. That's right. Use burner to waste the savage. Okay, that, literally a prime example if you're wondering, oh, I want to play one after burner. Uh, no, that's just prime example, right? If you're going second, after burner is just insane. I just saved him there. Okay, was very good there, yeah. So I mean, oh, fuck, just clear the whole thing. Yeah, so I'm just gonna multi roll for Ray here. Then I'm free to attack the Guardian with Ray. Make Kayate. <laughs> so, uh, make Kagari Widowmaker in battle phase to clear all those monsters. And then this play is really good because by not making Kayate, I can make the Sky Striker link to Zeke. And then I get to link off the Savage. So I can activate uh, main monster cards, uh, like the Sky Striker cards, by right. clearing my zone. Right. And then the Shizuku is going to be my fourth summon here, which is perfect for just playing around anything. Nice, nice, nice. Well, was that four summons? Holy, you, you cleared that without access code too. What the fuck? Are you guys see that? Are you go, chat, you, are you looking at this shit right now? That's crazy. I'm sitting here. I'm, oh, that's, that, bro, that's just wild. Uh, and you didn't even know, does he know you have Rosie? I didn't notice. You didn't negate that, right? No, no, no. He, like, you just stayed in your hand. So you did that literally four cards. Like, just four striker cards. Maybe there's a reason I engage, had, to, had to go. So you set that. I mean, engage would have made that really easy. Yeah, uh, that's true. So you still have four. Yeah, that's just game. Holy shit. They're just like. I just a... get to reset Shark and Widowmaker here, <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> yo, 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 chat, do you see this? This is actually unbelievable. This is game two. So game two. Uh, he makes you go first. So this is a prime example. How? Uh, so imagine this this hand, but Striker's going second. You guys see this? He had Mystic Mind, Valor, and Nibiru. That was just game. Valor, Nibiru, Mystic Mind, full combo, Hayate, everything. So that's why you'd want to go second with Strikers. For those wondering where playing go first builds, this is, could be a great uh, reasoning for you guys. Now, I remember here... Uh, sorry, what were you going to say? Yeah, so this game, I had Valor, Nibiru, so I just wanted to set up be able to play my deck the following turn. Right. Which is why I added multi roll to make Sevitation resolve. Yeah, well, Here we're... I'm just gonna wait until he commits to the field with Marcher and his extenders and then yeah. he's gonna get uh Alien on Guardian into Nibiru. Definitely yeah, yeah. And yo yo, does, what, did Nibiru ever Because uh, uh, Nibiru's like a monster, did it ever stop your striker cards from being activated? 
Uh, it's really easy to clear with, uh, you play five normal summons, which is more than it used to be. Oh, right, yeah, And you yeah, also yeah, have yeah. area zero and multi so it's fine. Right, right. Oh, yo, someone, uh, someone in the chat's asking you, uh, what's your opinion on goods and fusion? A goods and fusion, uh, you don't really need to get three spells in your game on turn one. You just need to have them, like, for when you push, which is usually after a couple of turns. Fair, fair. I didn't want to put, I didn't want to put potential bricks on my deck where I'm drawing a garnet of the time that I'm drawing a card that's a mediocre upstart. Fair, fair. What about an Avarice too? You like it? You didn't like you didn't play it. Do you, do you like it? A Avarice is a card that only works on turn two when you've opened Ray and get to play the game, which means you're already winning. Ah, good logic. I so like clear, it. I did this uh, set rotation play with Maltego to be a Cosmic so I could resolve my uh, that can be the only one because I already had a uh, Rose in my hand, but he didn't know that. So I was able to bait out the Cosmic Cyclone to keep my backer alive. Nice. And then I did, it, did a kind of cute play where since I have Ray Rose in my grave, I can Hyrule crash into the Cerberus, oh. and then Ray makes the yeah. Hagari. <laughs> I remember this. And Hagari crashes into the Cerberus to summon back Rose. Yeah, I remember this, I remember this. You guys, yo, everyone look at this, this is a big brain to the max. <laughs> crash this Ayate for Ray? Ray summon Kagari? One spell? Wait, yeah. Sorry, yeah. One spell, add, crash both, and then summon Rose. <laughs> that was big brain to the max. Yeah, so that, that basically just gets rid of all those cards and puts me in a really good position here. Yeah, yeah. So I remember watching so this. Just... You had those two. Unfortunately, you didn't have enough spells for Widow to steal. He top decked the Block Dragon. So that was just, like, massive. He top decked Block Dragon, which is unfortunate, but it wasn't actually a huge deal. Because he can't break through Anchor Widowing. Anchor and uh, they can be only one here. Yeah. So we're really just gonna go back and forth for a bit here. He's yeah. gonna he's gonna eventually make Unicorn and then that's gonna force out the Widow Anchor. So he ends on Unicorn Block Dragon. Yeah. Then uh, I'm not I'm not quite sure how caught up the stream video is on this right now. Yeah. So right now it's uh, when you widow the Unicorn. Uh, so I'm gonna widow Unicorn and then he's gonna summon Block Dragon and Unicorn and come back. So I just came out to keep my to keep my engine alive here. Yeah. So you like, you always uh, try you always try and prioritize uh, always have at least one raid live always right like have your engine going always no matter what that's like the top priority. Always want to make sure you get to keep your engine alive. Okay. Exactly. Makes sense. Makes sense. So I drew judgment here, which is okay. Uh, if you notice right now, I have two spell cards in my game here. So I activated multi roll, and then I afterburned the block dragon for no reason. Just to dump another spell in my grave and gain 100 life points. Ah. So, this is gonna set up for me crashing with Kena into Unicorn, and then I can summon Hayate, actually, by summoning back Ray and then attacking with Hayate. And since I use that Afterburner, I can dump a Party Drones with the Hayate's effect, and the Afterburner was used, so I get to set Widow Anchor in my end phase with three spells. Oh. And the Party Drones in the grave for multi will which means I have a nice. follow up. Nice, 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 nice. I love it. Oh, you guys see that? that that's why he is a champ, man. I I thought when I was watching this, I thought you I thought it was a misplay. I thought what you should have done. No, what, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, I made a point on stream. I was like, uh, there's a reason why we're not in the top four or whatever, top eight where it was at the time, and you were with this deck. We don't know the deck very well, but there's definitely some uh big brain plays gone uh with these stuff. I thought you should have let the Tacobo the unicorn resolve with the Tacobo. Let the Tacobo go. Or I forgot what it was, actually. It was like a few turns back. Or I thought maybe use Tacobo on Crusader and uh, Block. I, don't know, I forgot. But uh, but it definitely definitely worked out. What, what's, he, what's he have? What did he draw into? So at this point, I... So that's kind of question, questionable element. I have Judgment Anchor set. Yeah. So flipping the Anchor there, just so everyone knows, was because Tristan asked me to show what was set up all time. So yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. was not shot getting Anchor. Yeah, yeah. So I just, eventually, I wanted to get the game to the point where I would be able to send a Shark Cannon with my Hayate. Because Shark Cannon lets me revive a tuner from his grave and go for game. Because right. I really didn't want to extend the game for longer than I needed to in Sanimatia. Right. You don't think uh, 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 the best play here wasn't uh, stealing the Block Dragon? No, I, don't, I didn't think I wanted to steal the Block Dragon because I really wanted to end the game. Oh, okay, okay. Makes and, sense. And, uh, like, being a rock player myself, I knew that he would only be able to win if he 
So Guido T pitch tackle, they say they summon analyzer and face time defense mode. Bounce the Tacoma with tackle. And then he would have to hit exactly this to win. Has to rap tight. He has to rap tight with his level two yeah. and the level four. He has to hit into the one seeker left in his deck. Rap tight <laughs> so he can make Dre Guy. Oh yeah, yeah. So you were planning. So that's that's you know everyone. Chat. That's actually a great thing as well. That uh, to get good at every deck because this is Ryan here, knowing this deck inside and out. Who would have known that? Except unless you're an actual rock player, you know about the deck really well to know that he's not scared of anything in this situation because he knows the only out for the Tristan has to his whole board right now is specifically hitting that. So what are the mathematics of hitting one out of twenty three? So uh, it's like a calculated decision, you know. So. <laughs> Basically, I'm gonna judgment the Herald to make sure my anchor can resolve. Mm -hmm. Then Seeker hits a level four. So for him to win after Herald is judgmented, Seeker has to hit a level four, and Raptide has to hit the one Seeker left in his deck. And the chances of that are just astronomically low, right? Yeah. So I, I since I was a game up, I just decided, you know what? I'm gonna make the play that wins me the game as long as this eighty percent chance doesn't screw me over. Fair, fair. That makes so a lot of sense. He did. He didn't get it. He hit Analyzer, but didn't hit the level 4. Because so many of his rocks were in his graveyard. Yeah. So he makes this play, which is Forest. And then I am going to anchor the Appaloosa, but not take it. Which means that he takes damage. I get to send Shark Cannon, and then I revive Rose because Appaloosa died. Which lets me keep my little monster alive. <laughs> Yo, that's genius. So I'm just, just going to multi-roll away the victim, the only one. Because if he has Raptite. If I Shark Cannon and he chains Raptor to banish his spell, Shark Cannon doesn't get to summon because I only have two spells in grave. Yes. So I just multi to Tacoma to be safe, made access code for 53, and attacked over the carrier for the game. <laughs> Bro, that was the cleanest tool. Yo, chat. Chat, how amazing was that? Like, this makes me literally want to play Striker. Yo, Ryan, bro, I gotta tell you, congratulations. You, you proved the entire world wrong. And I'm so happy you won because what you pulled off was absolutely amazing, man. Uh, do you have any uh, last words you want to say before we uh, end, end the video and stream? Uh, so, uh, first, shout outs to uh, family because family comes first. Uh, shout outs to my second family, Game Nation. Uh, check us out at ygomarket.com and then use code, uh, you know what, use code Dylan5 for 5% off. I'll give Dylan <laughs> And then, uh, and that's to my uh, the fans that I play DD with, uh, Secret Seven. Uh, yeah, recognition, I guess. And uh, happy birthday to Ray! Yeah. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Hey, pleasure to have you on, and thank you for being on. Later, bro. Thanks. Later, bro. Ryan, that's my boy, man. That's it for the video, guys. I hope you liked the video. Make sure to smash the subscribe button, smash the like button as well. Let's hit 500 likes, and big shout out to Ryan again. For coming back to the channel for the great interview and deck profile. Don't forget to get a beautiful trick game playing in the description below. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.